I'm Annalyn. I am known as the DM or the Dungeon Master. And welcome to Heroes of AOA. So, into this crypt. Down a tunnel. Yisang holds a little light in front of her. And you hold it up, it's turning down a passageway to a broken section of wall. The broken section of wall. You stumble through and there's a warm glow coming from this area, and then a cold glow of blue light from the opposite end, where a collapsed skeleton lays in a heap, with rags of green surrounding it, and there's a sword hovering in midair above it. You come into the room, and you see this. Roll for initiative. Howie has a 15. Okay. He signed got a Dirty 20. Dirty 20 is still good. You're right behind me. Yep, and, and I got a 5. Aaron got a 22. Yep. Alright. This thing got a 17. So the order as such will be Aaron You say Sword Dang, aka Howie, and Talon, aka Toasty. Alrighty, so what do you want to do first? Shoot the sword. Well, I believe I initiated combat with Produce yes. Flame, and I rolled a okay. 20 to hit. Okay. Alright, so that does hit. Okay, so I will roll damage. Uh, it's only a four fire damage. Okay. So, the sword heats up for a moment, and it looks like you nick the edge of it. And so the sword cannot do anything because it's not its turn. But... Yeah, we're gonna face step so that I'm back over by Maui as my bonus action and then the sword unless it's immune to being frightened will have to make a wisdom saving throw the sword is immune ah darn okay that's fine well i'm i'm out of the way anyway <laughs> so <up>. so <laughs> in, i was right in front of the sword and then suddenly Aaron disappears and reappears right in front of Howie. Howie is very confused. But we will go with it. it Sorry, is this Howie's might get turn, a little right? nasty. Okay. It is now Yi Sang's turn. Okay. Uh, I will cast Mage Armor. I think that's an action. Yes. yes. And then it is. As my bonus action, I will start Blaze Song and then I end my turn. All right. The sword seems to have a red light that looks like a scanner. Like when you go to scan your groceries, that fills the area around this red light and it kind of pours out of the sword in a continuous almost like a pulse and this beam grows larger and larger from the jewel set in the hilt of the sword and it flies forward to where the pillar is and it whirls in the air as if it's spinning and dancing. And it says to all of you, this is um, now something you can hear. It says, You are not deserving of my wielding. It says. And it Spins towards Howie and seeks to attack her. 
It's a 22. Oh yeah, you got her good. <laughs> Takes six slashing damage. Ooh. It bites into your arm. And slashes down from... It goes like shoulder to your arm. Like a long gash slash down the side of your arm. Owie is very upset, and goopy water starts to leak out of the cut on her arm. Yeah, I was about to ask, does she absolutely bleed? No, she doesn't bleed. No blood. <laughs> it's just, just water. <laughs> slurpy. <laughs> As this is the case with Howie, a strange, strange sensation comes from it. In addition, to the slashing damage you took. It also gives you 1d4. Okay, give me a minute. Um, this is because this is homebrew. This is a flying sword, but with a little extra. You take 1d4 necrotic damage. In this case, I rolled a 4. So the wound. The edges turn black to the wound, as if they're, it's the wound, wound is rotting as the sword hits it. 10 damage, yeah? Total? Mm -hmm. Alright. Thank you. So, that is the sword's action. Alright, next up, we have... Howie. Howie is very unhappy with what this sword has done. And she is going to cast Eldritch Blast on it. <laughs> How? Okay. Let's see if that hits. Twelve! <laughs> that does not hit. End of turn! Howie is terrified, and she will shield herself with her arms and push Aaron further in front of her. Help me! Okay, um... After kind of uh, sitting back for a bit and analyzing the situation, uh, Talon will rush in with his blade. Um, so run up to the floating sword and try and attack it. That is a 19 to hit. That hits. Great, okay, so that is uh, 17 piercing total with the sneak attack since uh, there's there's an ally um, by the blade, right? Is it Howie or Yeah, Aaron? Howie just okay. got hit by it, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, I believe that's all I can do for now, so I'll end my turn there. Okay. So, the sword seems to crack and a part of its blade shatters into nothing or falls to the ground with a large clang and then disapparates into nothing. And the sword kind of warps and it seems like the edge of the blade fizzes for a moment where you where you, where you destroyed part of it. Because the sword has two tips with like cross-tree bars jammed in between them. So it's actually two blades. It's a double-bladed sword, but it literally is two single-sided blades with reinforcement bars between them, like rebar. So imagine a ladder with two sides of a wall, but the two sides of the wall are sharp. So he's so. knocked half of it off. Yep. That would be correct. You've, you've knocked one half of the it's tough when you have options. Okay. I'm going to use Balm of Summer Court on Howie, and I'm just going to go ahead and burn both. Both charges of it. Alright, and that's your action? Nope, that is a bonus action. Understood. So, Howie gets 10 back plus 2 temporary hit, hit points. Yay, thank you. Yep, and then 
Uh, it's directly in front of me still. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll see how it likes getting punched. Well, I apparently did not hit it. That's an 11. That is correct. Well, at least I got something done. Okay, I will firebolt it. Okay. What does it need to do for that? I don't hit it. Nope. And then I will then. Actually, no, I have my familiar. I roll again with advantage. That's a 12 hit it? Nope. Okay, then I can't do anything else. So that's my turn. Okay. Yet again, Talon seems to be the only one effective against these things. Talon sees these adventurers trying to figure out their weapons and their skills while being beset upon by the weirdest thing in the world to them. At this point, at least, a floating sword. Yeah, he's, he's kind of taking the opportunity to, uh, again, analyze and just kind of come up with a list of everyone's uh, abilities for tactical purposes. And as this is happening, since it is Yi Sing just went, it is now the sword's turn. The sword is going to go for Aaron this time. Aaron? 13? No, a 13 does not hit me. Okay. So Aaron deftly dodges out of the way. Howie is going to try to use Eldritch Blast again. Let's see. 21 to hit and 7 damage total. Yes. Alright. And that will be the end of her turn. But the sword starts cracking on the opposite side where Talon um, on the opposite side from where Talon hit it and the blade starts to get nicks down its edges from the force of the blast. Okay, uh, Talon will swing at it again with his bladed tongue And it's an 18's hit. The sword it's hit. All right, that's eight, eight piercing damage. Okay. The sword's edge starts cracking even further, but it's still there. All right, that'll be my turn. I guess uh, Kala will also just kind of maneuver to um, to, to flank the blade uh, to kind of cover any escape it might have, and end his turn there. All right. So, uh, I'm gonna pull out the spear this time and try whacking it with the spear instead, see what happens. Ah, uh, that's a mess. 14. Yep. Alright, unarmed strike. Ah! <laughs> The spear kick combo just does not want to work. That was a 12. Doesn't hit. Yeah, so that that's Aaron's turn. Okay, I'll do the same thing that I did last round. Well, this time you should hit it, though. No, you were supposed to hit it. Well, I tried. <laughs> No, you were supposed to hit it this time. So for our listeners, Yi Sang rolled a 10 and a 9. <laughs> and it doesn't hit the sword's armor class. <laughs> I literally roll a 5 or lower, or sorry, an 8 or lower four times with advantage. 
within two turns. This is fine. Everybody missing except Howie once so far and Talon every time he swings it. The sword is turned since it rolled a 17 for initiative. It goes after Aaron again. And this time, it's going to attack you again. And, okay. 18. 18, yeah, 18 hits. Okay. So take that plus 1d4. This one got a 3, so 8 total damage. So 5. Plus three. So five plus three, okay, so eight. And then this actually causes them to bleed, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you get that necrotic damage of three. So we didn't we didn't do this last time because he got hit with the bludgeon, I think. But uh yeah, when he bleeds instead of like red blood, his his is this shining white substance that comes out of him. And so the sword seems to enjoy whatever is happening, and you hear sort of a whisper against when it when it wounds somebody. How you would have heard this too? It says, "I like the taste." It says, and the sword then backs up from you, and it's still within range, but kind of zips back a little bit by five feet or so. No, I was going to say, if it leaves my attack range, no, that would provoke. Okay. Nope, it's still within five feet, but it pulls back about just short of five feet. So. Yeah. So it's just kind of lingering, like it's going to move away at some point, but it hasn't done it yet. Correct. Alright, that's the sword's turn. Howie, blow the thing up, please. If I knew how, I would. Get it? I like that her name can be a play on words. I was originally <laughs> inspired by Hungry Howie's Pizza for the name. <laughs> but now I like that it can be used in sentences just for fun. <laughs> Yes. So, you want to roll to get at it? Yep. We're going to try to do another spell. Here we go. Did it roll on your end? Yes. Okay, good. 19 to hit and a total of 4 damage. So, Eldritch okay. Blast isn't doing as much as I would like, but it's working. The sword cracks further. It seems it's about to blast into fragments, but it's still together, barely by these little shards of metal which seem to have gotten lodged between the cracks. Very cool. End of Howie's turn. Um, swing a third time, try to connect with the blade. Oh wow, yeah, it's rolling really well, and it's uh, 22 to hit. Uh, so that is 16 total piercing damage. The sword bursts into shards like black glass, exploding outwards. But as it does so, all of you need to give me... Yeah, you got to make everyone roll deck safe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um... This is, uh, this would be kind of a creative solution, but if I were to use Action Surge and kind of, like, block with my shield, would that help at all? Mm, you could try. If you don't have Shield Master, then it, it wouldn't matter. Uh, that's true. Yeah, I can't really block for anyone else. Okay. It's not I would ask. I rolled a dirty 20. I got 17. How we roll the 16? Uh, it's 11 for me. Talon gets shards slammed into him. 
as black shards of this metal lodge in your armor. Metal skin exterior. And it's ping, 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 ping. Smack, smack, smack. Thick smacks of this, this metal just slamming into you. As soon as you, the rest of you saw this, you ducked and dove to the floor. Or something to that effect. And the sword just bursts. With, and following it, strangely enough, is a blast of green goop all over the ground. Like a showering of green rain. It looks like green paint that explodes everywhere with the, sh the shrapnel of the sword. And the sword's red jewel slams down hard. In fact, it makes a dent in the stone. And it goes spinning across the floor and lands at Aaron's feet. Okay. Did Talon actually take damage from that? He did. And he takes 1d10 damage. Okay. He takes 8 damage. Okay. Pretty yeah, Talon, Talon kind of stumbles back uh, with these bits of um, black blade shrapnel embedded in him. Okay. So, the only thing left of the sword is by Aaron's feet, and it's a bl blood red colored jewel. Aaron spits on it. It hisses, like as if it's hot, and little bouts of steam come off of it. I could uh, water it for us if we want to try. Yeah, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to uh, take care of this real quick. Uh, he he uh, touches his wound and uh, tries to heal it with the cure wounds. Ellie okay. pours some of the water coming out of her arm on the sword and sees what it does. The wound, the the jewel actually lit, laps up the water as if it's absorbing it like a cloth. And further, it seems the jewel suddenly just grows bigger. Ah, stop it! Don't make it worse! And the jewels just sit there twinkling in the leftover firelight. And the blue window behind it kind of flickers out. But the remains of it, the edges of it still glow with a faint blue light. Alright, so it's glowing faintly. Should we save these fragments in case if they're necessary? I don't know. That thing was talking to me. So I don't know if I want pieces of it lying around. That thing was talking to you? Yeah. What? You didn't hear it? No. No, I was busy. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Hey, hey, Shrapnel, you want... Do you know if, like, healing magic works on you or not? Uh, does it? That's something I don't know as a player, or if it, or if I need like mending. <laughs> Generally, I've seen mending as the the case solver for that one. Okay. Yeah. So, generally speaking, uh, healing magic still will work on Warforged because they're at, they're part partly classified as humanoid. So, okay. men, but they can be healed through mending what it does is it you cast mending on them they get to use a hit die to heal but i will i will double check the rule on that just to make sure always going to collect pieces of the sword we don't want the pieces getting into the wrong hands chill collect those very carefully put them in a bag uh talon will kind of Pick the ones that embedded into his uh, chest plate and uh, hand the, or just drop them in the bag that you're carrying. Thank you, Talon, Thalen, however I pronounce your name. Um, hopefully that didn't hurt. It did not, and Talon is my designation. 
Talon, like, that on a chicken? I believe so. <laughs> like the birds. Okay. Oh, no, not birds again. <laughs> How it will... seems it seems like this gem is the more dangerous counterpart of the blade. Is there a way we can contain it? Have you tried burning it? Like really, really hot? I could eat it. Well, don't do that. I mean, you could see what happens. <laughs> I am made of water. It grew it grew larger in the presence of your water. You know, you do have a good point there. Well I say keep it away from me since I'm made of water. He's saying, will you hold on to it? Sure. Thank you. He's saying. Do you pick it up? Very does anyone, carefully. Does anyone pick up this? I ain't picking it up. Howie touched the sword pieces, but not the jewel with her hand. And, um, Talon kind of... So, he has, like, a, a tinderbox as part of his uh-huh. gear. And he kind of just empty that into the rest of his bag and then scoop up the gem with the tinderbox. You can do that. Do that. Okay. It doesn't do anything except for a burst of like smoke comes off your tinderbox as you do this. The jewel is still hot. And I'll I'll hand it to whoever wishes to keep it and say, um, I would be careful. This sentience, this gem seems to have. I've heard of artifacts where the sentience could transfer. It's dangerous. Well, now that you say it like that, I don't think I want it anymore. Maybe we should keep it in a box somewhere. We should we should notify head research scientist Kyber. Yeah. That's uh, out like of game idea. question. Uh, what happened to Koi? Uh, so he's uh, yeah. He didn't come with us down here, and that's all all we know for sure. Well, we can keep it in a box until Koi can take a look at it. I agree. No objections here. So, yeah, I'm going to touch your shoulder and see if this works. So it's uh, 10 healing? Uh, no, that, well, yeah, that was, <laughs> I rolled oh. the same thing again. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yep. Nice. At least I'm consistent. Uh, yeah, so if that if that works, then um, yeah, you'll see the uh, kind of holes where the shrapnel blade had pierced through just kind of start to close up. Well, I yep. wouldn't have expected that, but all right. I'll take it. Talon, one quick note. As you as you have this um these wounds to your armor, you do see a strange strange ooze of like a black liquid out of your chest cavity area and as he heals this up the the this black liquid just kind of rides and lets off like steam just like the jewel does a strange phenomenon you're telling me yes I always go talk to the captain at this point, see how she's doing, check in on her. Okay. So, 
as you all are standing in this room, you hear a clamor and a clank of plate armor as the captain, wearing her customary silver plate armor and dark blue cape, rushes into the room alongside the head head research scientist. Behind her are three armed uh, elves with drawn swords, steel swords, not like her blade, which looks like it's made out of fear, fo pure phosphorescence or light. And she stares at the scene in front of her. Uh, Talon probably just got up from the floor, saying kind of like she's got water slowly healing on her back into place and got Yi saying who looks a little shaken maybe just a little bit like surprised maybe and you got Aaron who's well doing what Aaron does which is not liking birds but I'm sure he also was thinking about helping his friends yeah busy getting everybody else standing up exactly yeah y'all are a little bit late the armored captain looks around and says, This is very strange. What is this room? The researcher says, I don't even know. I don't know if we've actually been in this area of the ruins we've been excavating. How did you guys get in? Besides the door. I opened the door, saw the sword, and, well, left, she says. Like, how did you guys get that thing activated? Uh, well, see, uh, there was this skeleton, and then you touched the skeleton, and the skeleton fell apart, but what was holding the skeleton up was apparently the sword, so I thought I'd see what the sword was about, and then the sword starts talking. Behind you guys, you hear a strong, warm, sort of commanding voice. Captain, researcher. May I have a look? Two bodyguards following Koi. He steps into the room and scowls. He puts his hands on his hips and then does the thinker classic uh, Greek, Greek philosopher pose where he kind of like scratches his goatee on his chin. And he looks around the room and he says, What a strange place. I've never seen anything like it. Kind of glares at Talon for a minute, but then walks forward, and he sees the remains of the skeleton. And you hear him gasp audibly. <gasps> like that. Sharp and take a breath. We found it, he says. And he walks over to where the skeleton it lays in shambles. With the green remains of the robes, or whatever it was. He looks at the glowing blue light from the window and looks at the figure. We found him, he says, and he turns and looks at all of you and he says, We found Artisalian, creator of the Swords of Twisted Death, he says. The very weapon that it is supposed you used in battle, Talon. Talon looks slowly down at his tinderbox with this gem inside. Thank you for listening to Heroes of AOA. Our dungeon master is Annaline the Fanith. Howie Gokis is played by Sanguin. Jung Yi Sang is played by myself, Daniel. Aaron Cloudspark is played by Neuron. Talon is played by Tim Galvin.